how do we decide what's a want versus what's a need as we get ready to move into our RV to travel America? We'll tell you how we do that and what we've accomplished so far on this episode of Roaming with Rosie. Hey Roamers, I'm Jamie. I'm Linda. And this is Roaming with Rosie. And I'm getting ready to quit the corporate world early because waiting to live our RV life seems like risky business. Tomorrow or the good health to enjoy tomorrow is definitely not guaranteed. Our plan is to hike the trails, kayak the rivers, and explore America while we still can. Maybe a little bit slower than we would 10 <laughs> years ago, but definitely faster than we will be able to 10 years from now. Exactly. If you're new here, welcome. We hope we can motivate you to start living the life you dream of in some small way or a big way as soon as possible. Make sure and hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you'll be notified each time we upload a new video. As we get ready to make this happen, you'll see how we ask ourselves questions so that we can make the choices so that this RV life that we're dreaming of is very successful. And we'll also separate our wants from our needs and we'll be doing that throughout our episodes. This episode is part of a series that we've been doing on getting ourselves ready for our full-time RV life. If you want to see the rest of the series, there'll be a link down below to the playlist called Full-Time Ready. We've worked hard our whole adult lives for what we have, and we want to still have these things later on down the road. And we don't want to have to go back to work full-time to be able to replace it later. Is that a want or a need? It's a need. <laughs> this means we start out on a tighter budget and we might even explore some work camping along the way. We're using the five categories of lists that we shared with you on our last episode to help us determine what our wants are and what our needs are. They are house prep, RV prep, travel plans which include memberships and reservations we need to make, health care which includes insurance plan choices, taking care of our health and our dental care, as much as possible while we still have our current coverage. This includes Dexter's care as well. And then our personal business like our mail and our banking. This week we should have been using the beautiful Arizona spring weather to get our house ready and the RV ready to move into it this summer. Right, we're giving up our normal which would be kayaking the Salt River here in Arizona usually on the weekends and sometimes we do it during the full moon, full moon evenings. Yeah, that's a want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we should have made more progress on getting the house ready to make it a short-term rental. So what have we done this week? Uh, not much. I've been <laughs> working on a side job, uh, actually for the woman who let us store Rosie, original Rosie there. She asked me to do some landscaping, so I've been building walls and getting ready to lay some pavers. So at the end of the day, I don't have a lot of energy left. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how I used to be able to work all day and have a pretty <laughs> physical job and then get our boys, take them to sports practice, somehow figure out dinner, helping them with their homework. And then we even went to their sports events on the weekend and somehow managed to get things done. Right. That's a difference between 60 and 30. Yeah. <laughs> and this is exactly why we don't want to wait five more years uh, to be able to make this dream happen. Yeah, exactly. It's our energy levels that change as we get older. Right. We have made a little headway. Right. Um, I've been selling stuff online. I, I Years ago, I was a CNC machinist, and I've been selling a lot of those tools online and that's been going pretty well and I, so far I've made enough money to actually buy our tire pressure monitoring system with that. That's a need. We talked yep. about that last week. We ordered the solar system. A solar system. <laughs> uh, we ordered six solar panels which is 1200 watts of solar, a charge controller and wire and all the accessories needed to be able to complete that install which came to $2,700. <coughs> Sticker shock. I know we discussed it. We planned on it, but I tend to put that math out of my head when I don't like what it equals. Yeah, and we had budgeted for that, um, and we kind of looked at it as we budgeted and talked about it that, okay, yes, it's a lot of money up front, but in the long run, with 
having to run the generator and fuel prices going up and all that kind of stuff it would kind of just uh, wash itself out later um, and also you know we're going to use the solar as long as we're out there using the RV so it's going to pay for itself in the long run. Hopefully and we'll tell you more about those two purchases the tire pressure monitoring system and the solar system in upcoming videos. We spent a great deal of time this week researching how we're going to get our mail. Yeah, it seems a little more complicated because we are keeping our sticks and bricks, but because we may have short-term renters in the house from time to time, we can't use that address for our personal mail. Which means we're going to have to use a mail forwarding service. So we're looking at virtual mail service companies where you choose an address, the mail goes to that address, then somebody there scans the outside of an envelope, uploads it, and you go online and you choose how you want that piece of mail handled. Yeah, you look at the envelope once they've scanned it and you choose whether you want them to open the envelope, scan the entire content so you're able to read it, or shred it without opening it, or they can have it or you can have it forwarded to you wherever you're at. Okay. The costs vary depending on how you choose to have them handle your mail. Sounds easy peasy, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> but Immediately, we were watching a bunch of YouTube videos on what these services provide, and I started yelling at the TV and saying, wait, that doesn't sound very secure. Yeah, and the reason was when I started looking at some of the addresses that you can use, one was like a Staples, another one was an office complex, and then you, we started talking amongst ourselves going, okay, well, how secure is that? And what kind of background checks do they do on these individuals who are handling all your personal information? Now, you've got to remember, if you have credit cards mailed out, replacement credit cards, I mean, and then bank statements or anything like that, if you have any of that stuff mailed to you, they're going to have access to all that. So like, it's a huge security concern. We're used to shredding anything that has our name on it. So. Right. You know, anything that I get that has my mailing address and my name on it, I shred it. Um, so I that, don't just throw stuff away. I shred everything. So that was, there was some concerns right away with this. The fact that so many virtual mailbox companies contract with other businesses to be third-party uh, handlers of your mail made it seem a little risky. A lot risky, I think. <laughs> One of the companies that a lot of YouTube RVers talk about on their channels, I went and looked at their website, and it's not until you're two-thirds of the way down into the website before it tells you anything about their security, and with that, it was like one sentence. Your mail is handled by the professional staff at the retail pack and ship store or an executive business center. What the heck? Each location is certified by the United States Postal Service as a commercial mail receiving agency. On-site staff are trained to respect and protect your privacy with respect to all the mail they receive. All personal digital data is encrypted and secured. But that's after they see it, and that really doesn't say anything if you think about it. Another service we looked at won't even tell you how securely they handle your mail until you actually go through choosing an address. Yeah, and I went ahead and did that, and it still would really only tell me what services were offered based on which address you choose, and it really still didn't spell out their security. And just as an extra bit of information that I found out while doing this, a foreign company can choose a U.S. address this way, and you would look them up and go, oh, okay, they're a U.S. company, I want to deal with them, but you wouldn't be actually dealing with a company that was here in the United States. And most of these services start at about $10 a month, which seems like a great deal. But then if you think about it and you've been hacked and somebody stole your identity, then it doesn't really work out to be that great of a deal. How many employees have access to your mail? How are they screened? How do they choose these employees? How much turnover is there? And how much oversight is, is there? And what type of training do they get? And are they bonded? And if there is a breach, how are they going to remedy the situation? As soon as we started asking these questions and looking for more secure options, we're looking at more like $70 to $80 a month instead. And that seems reasonable when you start to think about you're protecting your identity, your finances, and your credit. We thought this was going to be the topic for this week's episode, but as what often happens to us, we came up with more questions than answers. And we wanted to be sure of the choice we were making so that we could give you accurate information so you can make the best choice for you too. 
Yeah, so next week's episode will be all about forwarding mail and virtual mail services. And we're going to delve into that security issue and share with you the choice that we made for our mail forwarding service. So what else have we accomplished this week? Well, we thought we had nailed down our towed vehicle. Yeah, originally we were looking for an SUV that we could car camp in so that we could get down into some areas where the new motorhome is too big to get into. Right, and as we were looking into that, you know, we wanted something that was four-wheel drive but also be able to camp in, and that just got more and more expensive. Yeah, that, that became a want. <laughs> <laughs> and just like there's no perfect RV, there's also no perfect towed vehicle. Yeah, unless you have unlimited funds. Right. So what is our need? Um, we want four-wheel drive. Um, it can either be manual transmission or automatic transmission, but if it's automatic, it has to be able to where you can go in and go through this series of programming it so that you can tow it without doing damage to your transfer case and also your automatic transmission. Otherwise, what we would do would be keep our Tahoe and I can get what's called a, a rear differential disconnect so I would be able to flat tow the Tahoe. Yeah, we at the very least want to have higher ground clearance than we've had with um, my car, my Kia, taking it out there because there was a lot of areas in Utah that we really would have liked to have explored a lot more, but we were worried about the ground clearance. Right. And we need to stay around 20 grand or less for a vehicle, and we want to have a, a vehicle that has good ratings for repairs and durability. And although we've taken the need of car camping off the list, we still need to have it um, be able to carry a bladder full of fresh water to bring to the RV. Right. <laughs> At this point, we need to be around 3,500 pounds or less. Now, Rosie can tow more. Uh, but it doesn't have the biggest biggest engine. It has a bigger engine than Ro original Rosie, but because we're also going to be taking a lot of other stuff, we want to keep that weight down. So I'm trying to st stay with a vehicle that's 3,500 pounds or less. So now it looks like we're looking at a small pickup truck that we can put a shell on, or possibly we could just use the Tahoe. And because we want a four-door crew cab, but in a small pickup truck, we're definitely not going to have it a bed that's big enough to actually make a bed out of. No, because it's a crew <laughs> cab and it only have a five foot bed, so we have to sleep with our legs I could up. fit. Maybe. <laughs> if you had suggestions for toads and what works for you, please let us know. And if we have to, which we really don't want to, we may have to go to a manual transmission. Yeah, is that a want or a need? <laughs> <laughs> That wraps up this episode, and as always, all of the equipment and services that we talked about and that we use will be down below in the description and also on our website. And if you gained something from this video or just enjoy watching our videos, you can support our channel by using the links down in the description. And even our Amazon links. You can use those links to do any of your normal Amazon purchases and get things at the exact same price you always have, but we get a tiny commission if you use that link. As always, we appreciate each and every one of you, your comments and sharing our videos. And if you haven't yet subscribed, make sure and hit that subscribe button. And ring that bell so you'll be notified each time we put out a new video. And make sure and leave a comment so you can be part of the conversation. Until next time. See, see ya. ya. Is that it? Are you all done? Okay.